everybody. We are live. Hello. Yay. So this is the February live show for the Blades and Bodice Rippers Book Club. As you can see, there are a lot more faces on your screen because we have officially invited Bethany and Mara to be new members. I mean, they were unofficial members already, but now we just, we put a ring on it. It's official now. And we are going to be discussing <laughs> From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. We have um, vastly different opinions. Well, maybe not vastly, but there are some pretty, very, pretty different. very different opinions. So it's going to yeah. be a lively show. Um, should we just start off like <laughs> how many stars? Let's go from there. Personally, 3.5. 4.5. Oh, is it Mara? me? Yeah, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a one. <laughs> That's a one. Oh, that was a one. I thought she was pointing at Bethany. Uh, <laughs> I was at two and a half, but I landed at a three. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, Mara, yeah, I was at a three, but I felt like generous. So I was like, yeah, three, three and a half. Yeah, yeah so. I actually, I enjoyed the course of the ending. So I was like, okay, I'll bump, I'll bump yeah. this up to a three. Yeah. There, there are I, I just finished... There, but... I do. Think I just though, finished that, like, filming the end of uh, the vlog where I was vlogging my feelings, and I spent twenty minutes just now ranting at a camera, and I kind of lanced the boil of my rage. So I'm feeling very chill right now because, like, I let it all out already. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: like, my rating system and Mara's rating system are different enough that, like, my four point five is probably more like her three point five. So. Ooh, okay. So, I mean, just in terms of equivalency. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Bethany, like, if you like truly love five. something, you give it six stars, and then mm -hmm. for Mara, it would be five five stars if she truly yeah. loves it. Is that? Yeah. 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 Four and a half to me do. is a favorite of the year. Yeah. So four and a half to me is, is like, I liked it a lot, but it wasn't quite good enough for a five star and definitely wasn't a favorite of the year. So, like, my, her three and a half and my four and a half are, like, pretty equivalent. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so... There, okay, I think we, well, maybe not Leanna, but most of us here can agree that there are a few things that were good about the book that I did enjoy. I thought were done well. And then a lot of it is a hot mess. <laughs> there's one thing I liked. See, there's one thing. So you get one star. <laughs> the cover. I wouldn't, I, mean, I didn't think it was a hot mess. I very much enjoyed it. I think it's a good version yeah. of what it is. It's just, it is the book that it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that, um, a level of suspension of disbelief or like a willingness to like what I would call a, a going with itness. Yeah. Um, I think once I figured out what kind of book it was, it was like, okay, this is the kind of book it is. I'm not going to sit here and like dwell on sentence structure or like major <laughs> plot holes. Like that's I mean, not what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I just think that you, you had a lack of going with itness and that is your right as a reader. I would just say that for me, once I realized that's what it was, I was like, okay, that's what this is. It reminds me very much of like Kindle Unlimited fantasy romance I've read. That's like not super high quality. It's just sort of like, it's fun. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. fine. There's some banging. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, like, here's the thing, like, I didn't know, I didn't even know it was about vampires until I started reading it, frankly, I just didn't know yeah, research. Me I didn't know me either. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it so it wasn't great. just me, I was just, no. I just don't do research on anything, I just leap in and go, well, it'll I mean, probably turn out okay. People, I think people <laughs> are considering that like a spoiler, basically, like, that, because you don't find out till the end of the book, and nobody talks about it without spoilers. Well, you don't I mean, find it out, but I, I mean, kind of, like, kind of apparently <laughs> that it's about vampires pretty soon, because well, they like, don't. Yeah, vampire they don't come out and call them vampires until the end of the book. But like, I mean, if you they're vampires. <laughs> if you've ever read any kind of speculative fiction, I feel like I just assumed that they were calling them something different. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, I was like, okay, in this world, well, they're just soon, not. As soon as we were told in the beginning <laughs> that there were wolven, but they are now extinct, I was like, they are not extinct. And where you find werewolves, you find vampires. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know what's happening. <laughs> Hey, I will have you know that in the Side Changeling series, there are, are plenty of werewolves and not a vampire to be found. So that is not a universal... Yeah, but the title truth, is but... Blood. And there's I mean... some nocturnal folks acting real sus. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, see, Bree is saying that if she'd known there were vampires, she'd be more willing to read it. So I think people are uh, missing... Well, you're welcome. You would think so, but these are not fun vampires. Well... Um... I don't know. Okay. So the vampire <laughs> thing. I know, Leanna, you're not super into vampires anyway. 
And I love Interview I, with a Vampire. Give me Lestat any day. Yeah, but that's like I that's like sexy vampires. vampires. I, I'm into sexy vampires. Like as a yeah. rule, I'm if there's wares, if there's vampires, like I'm I'm a basic speculative romance gal. Like, yeah, I, yeah I'm into it. Like, I mean, I like it. Too, blood. Yeah. It's great. It's I I have a yeah. werewolves over vampires kind of girl, but that's just me. But yeah, um, I would I would prefer same. if I'm picking a shifter or a vampire, I'm picking a shifter. I would agree yeah. with that. Bonus points sure. if it's like a dragon shifter instead of just your basic wear. Do they bear. have tails? Uh, yeah. <laughs> dragon okay. shifters? Wait. Yeah, they're like full Did, on dragons, and they let dragons. you fly on them if you're the, you're their mate usually, and that seems awesome. But I have read some dragon fiction where like they use their tail. They they have a tail when they're in humanish form, and they've used it in ways that tails should not be used in. I oh, mean, I'm not, no, I, I'm not, that's not my, that's not my kink. It wasn't you know, mine either, but you. it happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that I would love that, but if you're somebody who read that and enjoyed it, I, you know, I don't want to shame you. There you go. Uh, I just, that would take me out of the book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, I did not know how dirty that book was going to be until I started reading it and went, oh, no. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. I can't, it's, I, I think it's called, like, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like, she she bangs five dudes simultaneously, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like I did not that's think so that many. could have happened. That's, that's, that's too much. That's too much. That's like, was that's there gosh. room for everybody? Apparently, I think you have to tap in and out. I would think. Like I don't. No. I don't well, then it's everyone... not simultaneously. It's just in quick succession. Oh no no! It was simultaneous. It was it was uh, a lot. Yeah, I. It's I like think... That's wow. just that's a lot. <laughs> it's it's too. too much for that's me. A lot. Um, but again, you know, I don't want to kink shame anyone. If that's your if that's your deal, you you do you with you anyone who's you. consenting to do it with you. That's great. Yeah. It's just like he doesn't you, do that. When you're not expecting five yeah. A six way, you're just like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> that's that's very fair. I feel like yeah. a, a trigger warning for a six way is is merited. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know where, like, I know we've talked about this before, and I don't know exactly where or if it was in public or not. But like, books need a smut o meter so that you don't open it and you're like, why is all of this happening? <laughs> like, it needs like you know, like yeah. when you have hot sauce, they give you a ch- how many chili peppers this one is. <laughs> like, we need how many chili peppers is this romance? <laughs> But everybody's everybody's heat level is different. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it will still like help My you gauge it though. Your ten. I but mean, again, like, if you see Amanda, I think I've probably seen a lot of shit We've in our time. Again, like it'll give Everybody's you like it won't like, be such a shock. Like if you see <laughs> yeah. like a high rating on the smut meter, you'll be like, it's gonna like I don't know exactly how high that is, but I, I mean, know this is I gonna mean, be smut. We would have to have a rubric to go along with the smut meter. Like you would have to sort of say if it contains these elements, then it, yeah, get, like, then it gets like this. I feel like but I made a video about it. At least like a five out of ten. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. I, don't know. I I made a whole video about the spectrum of smut, and I and I and I broke it down a while hey. ago. Okay, but we need that to go on books. Like, yeah, on the pitch line, a little rating. Although, I didn't find this one to be particularly smutty. No. Not No. Really. It was, it was, it I, I thought that this, that was one of the things I enjoyed. Bit. I thought that the sex scenes were, like, yes. a nice level of spicy. Like, yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, like, this is, I was, I was into this. Leanna was not, but that's, but, that's yeah, I just, so like, when I was just wrapping up my vlog, I was like, I thought about breaking out my camera when this happened but then I didn't so I just like recapped it but like I was needing to finish this book last night so I switched to audio and just was like you know knocking it out and I was in the kitchen like stirring something while it was, it was going and I could feel my face going <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say if you bought into it by that point then yeah like fair enough you probably are not yeah. gonna like no, yeah. And well, then they're, they're sexy. Funny. Funny. I, mean, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Going off of what Mara was saying about like the sexy times, that was like one of the actual things I thought was done well with Poppy's mm-hmm. character because she comes off, you know, she's 19, almost 19 or something. And mm-hmm. she's sheltered. So her naivete makes a lot of sense. And she's also, you know, interested in sex and learning about that. And I felt like it was actually handled very well. Like her trying to yeah. figure out sexuality, and there was a big emphasis on consent. So that all, like, thought was done really well. Agreed. Yeah. yeah so part of it. 
I didn't I didn't necessarily love their romance, but I did like the sexy part of their romance, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I didn't really like them together, but I thought the sex part was good. I guess I like it as like I, I like the I, I I'm not sure that I would want him as endgame for her unless we get some major changes, but I like that's why I was like, this isn't an HEA type romance, which it's not. But I like him as a sort of like first venture into exploring her sexuality for her, if that makes sense. Like, thread like a glass. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Kale yeah. in, in thread of glass. Yeah. yeah. Kale, yes, exactly. It's like kale on throne of glass. Like I, Same like I weird. like. Yeah. It's very similar to Sarah J. It, it is. It is. Well, it has, she, yes. she thanks Sarah J. Mass in her. Actually, I only noticed that she thanked Sarah J. Mass because I also had just read a YA fantasy that was thanking Sarah J. Moss. And I'm like, who, like, is she just mentoring everyone? Like what's happening? <laughs> uh, yeah, this, the book this most reminded me of that I know all of us have read is A Court of Frost and Starlight, except it had more of a plot, I thought, than that one did. Um, oh, yeah, a lot more. <laughs> so <laughs> that gives people a sense of the vibe for it. I did not like A Court of Frost. <laughs> I know, but that was like so sassy. And I was like, oh, I like it. It gets spicy. But, yeah, I, I was, I gave A Court of Frost and Sour like two and a half stars because I thought for what it was, it seemed like it was an okay version of it. I just didn't love what it was. And I thought that's why I bumped this up a half star. I was like, I like this about the same, except I appreciate that this one had a little bit more of a plot to it. Leanna, yeah, do you want to no. throw something in? Because <laughs> you're just like, I hate all of this. Like, what book did y'all read? Because like, I saw precisely zero merits of any kind. <laughs> so much. Okay, fair enough. You know what? When I started reading it, and the term "dust bunny" got used, I'm like, Oh, Leanna's gonna hate this. Like, yeah, it was like an immediate thing. Reading. I was like, Oh no, I'm gonna hate this. I was like, <laughs> okay, well, okay, so like. <laughs> You're saying how, like, you know, all the, like, you know, abuse and, like, her wanting to live life and all that, whatever. Like, those themes were introduced and I think handled so badly as to be offensive and to be harmful. And I was like, no. Okay, well, explain. Yeah, why? <laughs> okay, so, like, basically the whole book to me felt like just a, but like, stringing together with the thinnest veneer of a plot like pit stops at wish fulfillment scenes. She wanted this conversation to happen. She wanted this soapboxing moment to happen. She wanted this scene to happen. So we just orchestrated events to kind of get us there. And then we kind of orchestrated events to get us to the next one. And so like the points that were like about abuse, they didn't read realistic. They felt like they were just stuck in there so that we could be like, oh, real bad abuser. So that later, like hot guy could one look better by comparison because he's not literally abusing her too so he could be like no one should he ever do that you know be like yeah i shouldn't be treated like that it, like it felt like it was just stuck in there so that later we can overtly be like that's never okay and you know what like in real life people do get abused and they do latch onto their saviors even if all that savior ever did was treat them like a human being which is all he did like he's not that amazing he gave her her first sexual experience and he didn't treat her like garbage so she's like wow and i'm like we're romanticizing that no this is a fucked up messy situation that we should talk about and could be a deep story like working through that trauma and this is just being fetishized and romanticized and i was like no well and i so i don't know what happens in the second book i have yeah. heard that a lot of people who like the first book don't like the second book and it makes me wonder if in the second book we kind of explore because like I do think I don't like their actual relationship like I, mm -hmm. I agree I no. think they're kind of toxic together and like I didn't think he I didn't like him I liked her okay I did not like him and yeah. so I wonder if in the second book maybe some of the kind of hintings towards the end that there's possible other love interests might get get explored more and therefore, people who liked the first book and liked them together don't oh, like Oh, see, maybe. that's interesting. That's I was wondering. That's interesting. Yeah, because, like, I, I don't like him either. But I like the, like, I like him for, I guess this is the thing, is I was reading this more as her story and a journey she's on and less about it being an actual romance. Like, it has romantic elements. But I was reading it more as him being an important part of her journey and not end game for her. So mm. I, I guess like for me, I was like, this is great that she can see that somebody can treat her well. She can have a first sexual experience. She can like get out of where she was and slowly figure out who she wants to be. And then eventually maybe in future books, hopefully meet the right person for her. 
probably not him. Like that's how I'm reading it. And I don't know what happens in future books in the series, but I, I hope he's not like Endgame because I didn't like him that much either, but I like her a lot and I like her story. So yeah. Not to speak was- for like all readers, but since it won best romance of the year, I don't think most people were reading it like you, Bethany. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, am, I will say having read this, I am very indignant that it won best romance of the year. Yeah, compared to yeah. me too. Like, I'm, what? I'm yeah. like, yeah. What compared because yeah, it was in the no. same category as Take a Hint, Danny Brown, right? It wasn't no, as a romance. Movie. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm like, fuck no. This is like not. No. <laughs> this was not even. But, but also, great. I would it's also like really to say that people, I took. But it's also like needs put it in that category. So like oh, it might be people yeah. who yeah like so it's not like other people voted to put it in that category. Goodreads put it in that category, and you know like. It, there may be people who loved the book who were voting for it because they loved the book, not because they would say it's the best romance per se. I mean, I think Goodreads should have put it in fantasy is, is what it is. But yeah. Yeah. I, but um, I would say that I also took umbrage with the fact that like, yes, your first sexual experience and like being permitted to have one. And that's not to say that's not important, but the fact that like, it's made clear that she's prevented from living life in every way and the way way we translate into like the way that she now gets to live life is because she got to have sex that like oh now she's actually living life i'm like there is more to life than sex (laughs) so like her being like love and living life were two things that were just completely equated with like lust and i was like that's like upping for sure (laughs) but like that's yeah that's often a like a convention in romance though it's sex first sexual experiences in romance historically are often a metaphor for the heroine becoming an adult in some sense now i don't like that that's why i tend to not love the virgin heroine trope anymore because i do think that's i don't like that i think that's sort of like a misogynistic regressive theme but i will say to me that is just sort of like an oft used sort of metaphorical shorthand in romance of that heroine's coming of age. This long, (laughs) if it had been like part of it, that she's like part of wanting to live life was like having her first sexual experience for sure. But we've got a lot of pages here that didn't have a class and didn't explore other facets of her life. And I was just like, I I mean, I guess I didn't think it was the only thing. Like, I didn't think that was the only thing though. I mean, like part of it was also like, you know, yeah, pushing but, uh, back on like pushing yeah. back on her abusers and Ch- leaving learning and she has friendship, and learning to fight and- learning to be who she yeah I mean there was way yeah. more going on than just her having sex it was an element of it but like I do think that's an important thing and I mean I guess too for me this kind of thing tends I this a part of part of why this kind of story tends to resonate for me might be also my religious conservative upbringing because yeah, obviously it wasn't like abusive in that sense, but it, it was something where like sex was a no, no, <laughs> like, you know, and so I guess I, I understand like as a coming of age story of like finally pushing past the boundaries that had been set for you and like taking ownership of that part of your life along with other ones. Like to me, that is resonant. And I liked how I, I, I liked her a lot and I liked her story, but I, I mean, you know, this, the, these are tropes that work for me that may not work for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I, yeah, I, I didn't love that she was so naive and I didn't love, I think I would have liked this a lot better if I'd liked him. I, I didn't like her. I didn't like or dislike her. She was kind of neutral to me. Mm-hmm. I disliked him and therefore I resented that he was the one introducing her to this new world. Like I, it made me like feel sh- it made her seem weaker to me hmm. that he was the one who was doing this for her. And so I wish it had been a better hero. I wish he'd, I'd honestly would have liked this better if he'd been more of a cinnamon roll. Now that's honestly also just my predilections, but I think that that could have introduced more interesting conflict for her where she felt a little bit more like the initiator. I felt she, she always seemed very passive to me in comparison to him. And I hmm. wish she didn't. Like I wish yeah. she'd felt more active or more rounded. Yeah, I can see that. But you know, she is nineteen, almost nineteen in the book, or something like that. And I mean, like, I remember when I was nineteen. I'm like, you couldn't keep clothes on me. So, like, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> like, I, I think like I was thinking with 
my vagina a lot at that age too. So <laughs> I, for me, it I kind mean, of made sense that, you yeah. know, that was like the be all of her existence at that yeah. moment. She's like, I yeah. need to do it now. <laughs> it feels that, I mean, cause yeah, for, yeah like it, the stuff like that felt like the most important thing at that age for me too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I'd also, so like, I know that I asked and then you were like, well, you find out later and then you do find out later. But I think it's poor writing and it was distracting that nothing is explained because like in order for a safe religion, (laughs) I mean, in order for them to have pulled the wool over everyone's eyes for so long, they had to have had some foundation for the belief that this is the right way to go about things, what we need the maiden for. Like, even if they're lies, there had to have been something that she believed. And instead he was just like, I don't know why, no one knows why. And you're like, you seem real committed to it though. And like, I get (laughs) that when you're being abused and other people are controlling your life and they like beat you down for asking questions. Okay, but there's plenty of the populace that also is like, this is how we do things. And I give my child for this. So like they would have to have some PR as to like why this is necessary. And that should be shared with the reader. So we're like, well, that's how things are done. However fucked up that is. So that later we can be like, just kidding. Those were lies. Instead of no explanation. That's just how it be. And I was like, yeah. yeah. What? I just finished reading Faithless and Death from J.D. Robb. And this has a cult trope in it. It's like, it's got a lot of the same themes, I think, in terms of sort of like what the conflict is. And then con- like, just to, I-, I tend to agree with you, Liana. And to sort of thread the needle between what Bethany was enjoying about the book versus your critique of how that was done. I think that this is a good example of like uber repressive religious force where like women are literally considered to be like breeders and you can't ask questions, you have no communication, but you get enough explanation of like why, like how they're indoctrinating people into going along with that, that by the time it gets to be so abusive, it feels more believable. So that's what I'm hearing you say, Liana, you didn't find the journey to get to that, what I think, I mean, to your point, I think what she's going for, you just didn't believe the journey for it. Well, yeah, and That's just in general, the world building was so shoddy that at no point could I take seriously her situation. Cause like, okay, so like everyone, so it's so, so important to make sure that she stays put, never talks to people, never sees people, but she's guarded by like two people and easily sneaks out to go train and no one's got eyes on this. I'm like, like really you don't have if she's like super duper important there would be like 10 guards outside of her door at all times like i i'm sorry but like I, and then she's like so sheltered but sneaks off so easily and if she sneaks off so easily then she would have heard people talking about like what goes on and what they believe about it but she's like you can't have her, your cake and eat it too either she's so controlled and sheltered that she never experiences anything or she is experiencing things and she's pretending to be sheltered because they need her to so that they'll loosen the guards but she really does know stuff and she's been putting this stuff together. And that would have been fun if she's like sitting there going like, they keep telling me this, oh, but yeah, like I've been outside. Been. Mm-hmm. I've been outside and I've heard what people say and I don't know about this. And then if Hawk shows up and he's like, clearly like, she's like, I think he knows stuff. Like I also, he's hot. So like, also his I, name is if I play innocent, he might tell me stuff, you know, like, but she was just like so doe eyed and yet also like constantly like doing things against the rules. And I was just like, I, who even are you as a character? It's really hard for me to root for you. Amanda, how does this compare to the other Armin Trout that you've read? Because I, I think I've read maybe one other thing from her, but okay, is this pretty typical go. of her? <laughs> um, getting ready. I think coming into this, I was the only Armin Trout stan in the group. I, I've read everything she's written. Uh, it's an acquired taste. Uh, it's like all of the books kind of have a silly melodramatic feel where you're just like, it's a popcorn book. You're just like, oh, gasp, yeah. what's going to happen? And, and you know, it's, it's kind of schlocky, but that's the point. You just want to like enjoy it. And I think her writing particularly works better in the other series she's written because they're urban fantasy. They take place in the mm-hmm. real world. And I think, (laughs) yeah, or there's sci-fi, there's a fantasy, there's fantasy ones as well, but they all happen in like the real world. And I think that's really helpful for it because I felt like a lot of the tone and vernacular in this didn't work for this fantasy world that they're in because this is a completely magical, mystical fantasy world that doesn't exist. But they mentioned places from the Except real world. It does because there's Pompeii and there's, there's Atlantis. Pompeii. What? <laughs> it's Macedonia, but with an S. It's yeah. an alternate. It's, it's, it's an alternate world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's. A, I think that's the a better. It's a parallel. Yeah. It's a parallel world. That, that is my biggest yeah. petty complaint about this. Is the like 
misspellings spelling. of things or like crazy spellings Penelope and her name is like Penelope or like whatever it was and then she goes by Poppy and then I hated that his name was Hawk in this fantasy world that drove me crazy I was like what are you even like also, the only I mean, thing that's very modern about this, like a guy hero name though like, it is but like in, a, like in a if this was an urban fantasy where like it's the werewolves versus the vampires and they're all working at a bar like yeah. sure his name is Hawk but like no I've yeah. heard that I've read it in fantasies before though like I've read it in like like I've seen it in fantasy books before I mean, like that is yeah oh yeah no it's and, like growing up I was modern seen, about this world so frequent yeah the only thing that was modern about this world was about apart from their speech was electricity that was mentioned <laughs> twice and then they never used electricity for anything so I was like why did we need to know that like her part of the castle hadn't been sufficiently retrofitted for electricity so that she could have that one line earlier where she said that her nerves shorted or whatever, which was mm -hmm. a clear reference to like electricity existing. Otherwise you can't have that in your speech. And then, but they're all just like daggers, swords, magic, dresses, like no guns, but we've got electricity. Cool. Yeah. What? <laughs> that would I be mean, cool. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I was saying. Like the vernacular, like she used the word dust buddy. Like why would a dust buddy be in this world? That makes no sense. So I think like, she maybe her her line of where she's doing great is more urban fantasy i would say maybe i guess okay um, i guess this is the thing is for me like all of that is true i just am not bothered by it because in a book like this like i'm not expecting great world building i'm not expecting yeah. it to all make sense and i'm like oh, okay this is what we're doing that's fine like i'm just gonna go with it like yeah it's whatever. sort of like hand wavy i'm of like okay like there's a like, reason it's a, it's a fantasy-ish world and we're just gonna go with it like it, it just doesn't bother me in this sort of book like if this was actually trying to be like a real high fantasy book then yeah it would bother me but like it's not so well, whatever yeah I but like I, I wanted more things. of it making sense like I, I I'm with you Bethany like there's a lot yeah. of books where I'm just like yeah fuck it this is just how it is and like yeah. I go with it and it's fun but like and I agree I went with this one I had a fun time reading it I didn't hate it but like I just wanted more things to just coalesce into something that had a bit more of a sturdier foundation. Yeah. I mean, I would have liked a little more information, but I, I which, which is why I didn't give it five stars. I mean, like, it's because I'm like, I would like a little more. And I would <laughs> like the hero to be a little different, which is why I was like, eh, it's not going to get five stars for me. But like, I, I had fun with it. I don't think I could ever have loved it, but I think I could have forgiven the shoddy world building if I had felt like, okay, her strength isn't world building, clearly. Mm -hmm. But if I felt the characters were, like, very, like, funny and dynamic and had a lot of chemistry and there was, like, a lot of good character stuff going on, I'd be like, this world around them make literally zero sense. <laughs> like, if they themselves were, like, compelling and juicy enough for me to be, like, into that then I could mm -hmm. be into it. But I was like, y'all's are y'all are just like planks of wood that make no sense in a world that makes no sense. And y'all just be like doing this and I feel nothing. <laughs> and this is stupid. It makes no sense. <laughs> it felt very fan fiction-y to me. But I like once I realized that was the vibe, I just went with it. Do you know what I mean? Of like, yeah. okay, you're you're not now that being said, like an author who's written this much, like would I maybe like that them to have more sure. But I just, I think I was just like, oh, okay. Like, this is just sort of a, to your point, Leanne, it's like a paper thin, like, backdrop world. Like, you're on the yeah. stage and there's like a, a fantasy kind of backdrop to you. Yeah. And then like, here you are. Like, you've got yeah. your little puppets on the stage and they're going to have a fun <laughs> break. And once yeah. once I accepted that, it was like, okay. Yeah. Here we go. Well, and I think this is her first time writing this kind of fantasy. So, like, she hasn't done yeah. this before. So it's possible oh, really? that future books could get better. Yeah, she's never done this kind of thing before. It's always been set in our urban world, fantasy, urban yeah. fantasy type stuff. So, I mean, for a first attempt, like, but it felt like, like urban fantasy, fantasy that, that had been transplanted back to that for a minute. Into, like, well, but movie. that's probably. I mean, I'm guessing yes. Like, I'm guessing it probably is the fact that she was like, I want to try writing this sort of thing, but what I'm used to writing is this thing. So we're just gonna try to make it happen. I mean, that's what it feels like to me. It's like her first attempt at kind of writing this, but putting in a lot of what she's used to writing. Like, I, I mean, I think that's probably what happened. So I'm curious. I want to read the next book, and I'm curious to see if it gets better. Like, if she kind of gets yeah, a better. Yeah, because you know? I'm not gonna keep reading. But I would like. I, this is one where I would go read like the Wikipedia <laughs> summary of what mm. happens in the next book, just to know. <laughs> I, I have yeah. the next book. Um, one of my subscribers got it for me from my Amazon wish list. So I already had the second Aww. book. So nice. 
it's great. I mean, I might, I might read it just because I have it. Why not? But um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't so super, super impressed with this book. I kind of felt like it was an undercooked souffle. You know what I mean? Where it's just mm -hmm. like, it's probably still pretty good, but like that center is just, <laughs> but the sides are okay. You know, it's like one of those, it's an undercooked souffle. If by the sides you mean the cover, then yes, the sides are okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say I think because it just hit it's the kind it's one of the few forms of angst I enjoy which is like the betrayal scene yeah. like that that just hit my id yeah. in a way that I liked like I liked that the, I think what I thought was going to happen was that we were going to find out that Hawk was not going to go along with the rebellion anymore and he was going to like break away or something like that so when it turned out that he I mean I'm assuming we can do spoilers right yeah. I think we've yeah. Been doing yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing spoilers. So, yeah. like, when we found out that it's like, no, he is the Dark Prince. Like, he, like, he's Obviously. not breaking away. And he, yeah. Well, I didn't real. I, I don't know. Maybe I've been tired. I didn't realize okay. he was the Dark Dark Prince. I thought he was going to be like one of the minions, and he was going to oh. like break away from that, and they were going to go like. Oh no 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 no. Yeah. So I when that, that's what that's happened, I was like. Oh, okay. And then, like the whole like they had sex, and now she thinks that he did it to use her. Like that just hits my I angst like buttons. Like that's an <laughs> angst trope that I. That's one of the few that I can get into. So I was like, yes, okay. Like give this yeah. to my id. This isn't well, like amazing, but I just I like that trope. Yeah. So I sincerely yeah, I have a question though, because like I was now on like audio and just like trying to get through this. So like I might be wrong, but I felt like he said out loud to her i am the one known as the dark one and then later she's like not knowing that and then she's like oh, no he's the dark one and i was like he literally said he was no no, no he didn't do that <laughs> i don't mean like early on i mean yeah. like after he's already revealed to be part of the rebellion yeah when no she doesn't she doesn't find out until literally the end yeah yeah that was not no but um like like okay so <laughs> For the people watching, we all have like a boxer chat. We kind of keep in touch with each other while we're reading it. I like to, I like just to point out, I was fifty percent of the way through the book and like called it. Like I, yeah, you nailed did. it. Like you all did. of the twists, <laughs> and I was like, so he's obviously the fucking prince, right? Like I'm fifty percent through, right? <laughs> and then like, <laughs> and about the little creatures, and I'm like, yeah, it's the, it's the babies, right? Like, <laughs> like I'm like, I, I'm just gonna say I called it. It was very easy to predict at least for me but mm -hmm. then again I read a lot of schlocky fantasy sometimes so I'm just like there's things that I was expecting going, to yeah. happen yeah I mean I think about two-thirds of the way through I figured out that he was the dark prince dude but it took me a while like it took me longer I was like two, yeah I was further along before I before I guessed it but yeah I, I like that too though I really I, I I I liked the tropes of the book I guess is what it is like this this mm -hmm. hit a lot of my buttons of things that I enjoy and find interesting so even if it wasn't done perfectly well I still enjoyed it um and I'm curious to see what happens next I will just I would be probably mad if she ends up with him so I'm really mm -hmm. hoping that we get a better love interest in book two <laughs> well I see somebody said that the second book is just all smut it's right here the second book for for the spot. So maybe okay. maybe they just bone down a lot in the second one, or maybe they, maybe we get the thruple with with dude with is this the Kieran? Kieran? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we get a we get a threesome with him because like he was watching her bathe and he was like, "Don't worry, Hawk Castile, whatever the fuck his name is." Won't yeah. mind, and I'm like, oh my oh, gosh, you're gonna. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> when that happened, in the next one, like, what's happening? <laughs> when that happened, and when, like, I think it's Poppy's thoughts that she's like that she had remembered hearing that like there was like some kind of bond forged between Wolven and Atlanteans, and I was like, don't ruin Fitz and Night Eyes for me, please, please don't ruin yeah. that for me. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. Yeah. The world. <laughs> That's an yeah. actual dog, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's like an actual wolf. Like what? I these are different fantasy lores. Let's, <laughs> no! And Mary had the twin meat. Okay, sorry, we, we went into Robin Hobb for a second, guys, yeah. just in case people who didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I think it's I just thought it was interesting. I also I, I I don't know. I mean, I'm sure she did just want kind of want to have it in there. But I, I also found it really satisfying the scenes of like the abusers getting like decimated. I was like, yes. 
<laughs> I yeah, it was fine. I mean, they were I, yeah, I, they were assholes. They they didn't they feel. Were. I don't know. Like, like, like the best caricatures. scenes are ones yeah, where they yeah, were exactly. super like a, nuanced. A but, mustache yeah. twirling villain caricature. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, yeah. like, we were gonna have like a super unrealistic, like moment stuck in for moment's sake. The one that I would have preferred to have, not that it would be real more realistic or better plot wise, but more satisfying to me, is if like he had orchestrated <laughs> an opportunity for her to like kill them. Like Ooh. that he had like you know, kidnap them or whatever, and then like had okay. Now you, now you get to beat them, or now you get to kill them, or you get to have that one last like final say. So as opposed to like now they're just dead, and with the cane that they used to beat me, like thanks for saving me. Well, she she killed one of them, didn't she? Yeah, she killed uh, not the guy that was him. beating her. No, she he killed she killed the guy who wanted to stare. She killed the guy who wanted to beaten. like rape her, who was yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, way more yeah. disturbing. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, please stick lots of things into him that are sharp. Like please, yeah. <laughs> the, metaphorically, this great. is very apt. Yeah, that's um, that exactly it, Mara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but so no, also, I mean, like that was fine. But well, like going back to like how you know we all agree, like whether we like it or not, that this basically feels like a, an urban fantasy writer transplanting urban fantasy into a, a fantasy, mm -hmm. and like yeah. I understand that that's what occurred, but I also make zero excuses for that because if I, as an author, has pre I've predominantly been writing one kind of thing, and I want to try out another kind of thing, then I know that I need to adapt my style. That I can't just like we'll just same and we'll just put them in dresses. Like like that's lazy. <laughs> Like you have to know that this is out of your comfort zone, and with going out of your comfort zone comes work, comes effort, comes research, comes adapting to different ways of writing things. You can't just do the same thing again. Like shame on you. Well, for you, but I mean, like this was a very successful book, so I don't know. Like, I mean, she and <laughs> yeah. it was put, and it was put out through an indie publisher too. So I mean, yeah, that's the thing she's contracted for a lot of books that she writes every year through like that sh through big five publishers and this was a side passion project that she did and got published through like a tiny press so I mean it's not like this was the only thing she was working on she was like writing other books at the same time so yeah. I don't know I mean I guess I don't like in an ideal world sure but like I'm, I'm okay and and people like it so. yeah no, well Bethany like <laughs> Your your like reaction to this book and like just enjoying it for the campiness <laughs> is exactly how I feel about her other books. So like I yeah. get it. I know the yeah. feeling you have. We're just like, oh, what are they gonna do next? Popcorn yeah. gasp, and you just yeah. like enjoy it because yeah. it's just campy. So like yeah. I That's get it. Lindsay this one just wasn't hitting it for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Lindsay yep, Sands, like her Arjuno books. I'm like, yeah, this is like fan service. What? A but like it's fan service. I like so yeah. it's fine. Like I'm, yeah. you know, I'm just getting into the campy whatever of it. It also has Atlanteans, but they are, and they're also vampires. I know another <laughs> Atlantean vampire book. <laughs> yes. What are all these Atlantean vampires? Atlanteans. <laughs> yeah, vampires. Like, Atlanteans were like just developed, like they were scientists who developed like nano things that use blood to keep you young. So it's like a sci-fi version of read, it. Have you read Laura Adrian? It sounds very no. similar. Okay, no, that one. Is, Lindsay, it has Atlanteans in it, and they have like nanites in their blood and stuff. But they also have aliens who are also vampires, and their <laughs> tattoos turn colors when they get excited. Oh, wow! <laughs> no, the, this one has uh, no aliens, but uh, and then it the does aliens have no like the Atlanteans and stuff. Oh. That's just that's Ruby Dixon. Uh, oh wait, no, that's sorry. I was reading a different book, and like uh, they made reference to uh, the barbarians, the the blue peen book in it, and I was like, oh, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. oh, yeah but I mean it was it wasn't my favorite version of like fun campiness but like mm -hmm. it was it was okay but it's not that thing it just seems like it hit it just you had fun with it that's what I it had fun like. with it yeah it's like I can see the criticisms it's just it worked for me and it like yeah. hit the things I enjoyed for and was looking for from it and so I'm like there you go or, yeah like it doesn't yeah. Have you have you read the Lux series from her? I uh, so I have read one of the new ones. I read The Darkest Star. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a spin-off of the I Lux know. Series. I really enjoyed it. I have not continued, but that was super fun. 
Oh my I god. Did okay, okay, okay. I, okay. Then I, I did it, like, book. Okay, okay. The, <laughs> one, the one other book that I've read from her, I read her other one that came out like a year later. That's a spin-off of another series she wrote. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that that's one a spin-off of the Gargoyle series. That one that wasn't like that much. That's yeah. one's angstier. But like yeah. I think you would really like the heroine in the Lux series, Katie. I think you're really gonna like her. And she also okay. has a book blog and and she got upset with this girl's being mean to her, so she so she threw spaghetti on her at one point. And I was like, I'll, you know what? After this, I'm you're gonna get a package in the mail. I'm gonna send you the book, Bethany. <laughs> so I actually think you'd really okay. like that one. Yeah. You like this one, yeah. you go like that. Okay, cool. That sounds like fun. No, I really because I did. I read The Darkest Star and I thought it was like that's a spinoff really? of the Lux series. You okay, yeah, I know. I, I just haven't gotten back to the others, but yeah, I just thought it was yeah. so fun. It was very like melodramatic right? in a way I enjoyed. I was like, I will eat this up. This is great. Yeah. Popcorn and gas. I love and that it. one okay. is with aliens, like aliens, yeah. like the aliens live among us on Earth now. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, I like that. that's good. Yeah, it's like For a Roswell. Movie. It's like a. I yeah, love Roswell as a teenager, though. I like Roswell. It's Roswell like, is my shit well, when I was in middle Roswell. school. I do too, me too. I love Roswell. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch Roswell per se. <laughs> I watched it in college. I watched it in college because I wouldn't have been either, but I really liked it a lot. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like that. And it, I don't know. I thought it was it was very fun. It, it's a YA series, but it's like steam, on the steamier side for YA. See, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the other thing I probably that ding this down a little bit for me in the same way that Sarah J. Moss's are ding down a little bit of like, the new adult vibe is not my favorite. Like I either yeah. just want them to be adults, or I want them to be YA where it's like, I don't know, Ooh. not sweet necessarily, but just like in YA romances, I don't expect them to get together forever. Like it's yeah. So Ooh. I don't know, like it just it's a different vibe. And it's not as explicit. Um, I don't really love a new adult. It's like new adult has my least favorite parts of both types of romance, basically. Ooh. Got it. I will say I liked Serpent and Dove better than this, and y'all know how I felt <laughs> about Serpent. That's and Dove. That's another book I gave you to read, and I'm like, I think you like it. I I, I like Serpent and Dove, but I, I'm sorry, I really liked it too. So like, I really liked it so too. Like, when I was saying earlier that like there was no no there's no reality in which I would have like liked this, but. I gave Super Serpent and Dove two stars because, like, at least, even though I hated the characters, world building was horrible, nothing made sense, like, many same problems. But I did think there were moments where it was, like, amusing, where, like, their conversation, I was like, everything about this, I still hate it. But, like, in the moment, like, you got a laugh from me or, like, this conversation, like, hooked my interest enough to turn the page. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't like this, but I'm, like, like, chewing my way through it. And this, yeah. I was just like slamming my head against the book, being like, when will this end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt yeah. more that way about oh, the Black yeah. Company than I felt about this. And maybe that's just like some of my. I feel that every I time I give you a book, Leanna, I'm just, I, I'm like, you'll like it. And then like, it's just like you want to burn it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, it can't be every time. I can't even think of anything outside of Serpent and Dove. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> like, while we're here, but you didn't. You hadn't already read this. You weren't like, I've read this. Yeah. Can confirm it good. Like, you also um, were like, mm. yeah. And that, yeah, this other romance is. You're just like, God damn it. <laughs> but you gave me Tessa Dare, and I loved Tessa Dare. That's true. So what? One out agree. of many. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the the next book from Tessa Dare is really delayed again? It's so sad. It was supposed to come out last August and then it was supposed to come out in February. And right now it says 2024, which I think is just a placeholder date. Not it's yet. Placeholder it's date. not actually yeah. 2024. She said on Twitter, she was yeah. like, you guys don't freak out. It's coming yeah. out in the fall. <laughs> so yeah. like, I, just, I want it now. I'm ready I for know. it. Yeah. This is like a book I I've had pre-ordered for like going to be almost two years by the like time I get it. Months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bet it's been a rough year for her, like, because her husband's an ER doctor. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I know. And so that's, like... But she's history. learning Portuguese, so I feel like she's yeah. spending her time constructively. I also didn't realize they have, like, teenagers. She's, like... Yeah. It, I, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, side note on Tessa Dare. Any, <laughs> any opportunity for that. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. My petty yeah. thing I didn't like was the names. 
that we already talked about that. Yeah, yeah. you can't hear name is Penelope and have it with a PH because that's an F sound. Penelope. Penelope. <laughs> Penelope. 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 Why? No. <laughs> that's the what I was saying for 500 pages. What? No. no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like, yeah. I think that's the thing with this book is I was just like, all the stuff that didn't make sense, I was like, eh, okay. Also, <laughs> it's never way, explained. Bethany, I just sent oh, you the first two books of that series. Oh. <laughs> I just want to point but that so out. Like, it's, it, Poppy is not a natural it. nickname for Penelope, <laughs> and it's never explained why Poppy yeah. is the nickname. Like, there's not even a cute, ham fisted in fake story about how, like, she loved the smell what? of poppies and someone what called her something? Poppy. Like, but wasn't it something, maybe I'm misremembering this. I thought there was like a thing about flowers yeah, and like flower names somewhere in there. I can't remember what it was, but I think there was an explanation and it had to do with like giving people flower related names. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I, I don't know. Maybe it was a maiden like, thing. Yeah. I, get it. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think it was from her brother, right? Her, her brother and her family used to use it. And so like only like she lets a few people use it. Yeah, I don't, we just read this and we already don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally read this last week. I read and it a while ago. For anything beyond like <laughs> certain moments and then the ending, like okay, well, question: How did you guys feel about the reveal that she's half Atlantean, or like she's partially Atlantean? Mm -hmm. and, like, I fucking yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, like eventually later on in the book, you find out like all the scars aren't from scratches; they're from bites, and she's like yeah. normal. So I'm like, oh, so she's like not them; she's the other yeah. thing. Yeah, so, I mean, I was, yeah, I thought it was it was cool. It was interesting. I was like, yeah, it makes sense then that there's something different about her. I think I'm I'm also curious. Like, I want to know more because like we get hints at like there was something interesting about her mom, and I have I have questions. I want to read on in the series because I have things that I want to know more. You'll about. Have, you'll, once you read on, or I guess Amanda too, you give me like I don't want to read on, but I would like mm -hmm. to just hear, okay. I would like to report back on what's going okay. On. Since sure. I'm Honestly, so good I don't want to read on, this. but the. So there's I'm, one thing yeah, that I I'm, want to see, and I won't read it for it, but like I want to see her brother. I want to see yeah, her. See I want to find out like what's going on with the brother. Yeah, um, and I, I, you know, I think the last line yeah. was kind of a nice like dun 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 moment of like oh, yeah. yeah, it is a dun dun dun. But um, I was like, we're gonna go marry. I, I want this like early <laughs> yeah. in the okay, oh, that, yeah. that damn so. dimple appeared in his right cheek and then in his left. Castile Denier, the Prince of Atlantia, smiled fully as he lifted our joined hands and said, we go home to marry my princess. Ooh, Bring it that's a great last line. Like, that's a great okay. last line. Like, I literally didn't chuck. I was like, that is such a dun-dun-dun kind so of moment. It's so good. It's so good. Well, I want to... You know they shouldn't actually get married. And yeah. so it's, it's a great last line. It's like, what, what are they going to do? Yeah. Okay. It was very so, telenovela. I have a good track record of predicting like this book series. Um, this is what I'm going to predict. Okay, yeah. Let's tell us. Amanda's prediction corner. There yeah. are things in book one that they never got back to, but I feel are important. One, when she like loses her shit and she goes into murder rage. I'm assuming nope. that is an yep. Atlantean quality and that is going yep. to come up more in the next book. It's like a super speed thing. So And something I'm about that's her amazing. mother. Oh no, cause... her mother and father is the king who cheated on his wife with the mistress. So I'm assuming it's them. Oh, yeah, that checks out. Make, so I was baby. guessing that the, the Duke guy was in love with her mom. Oh, wait, no, hold on a second. No, 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 okay, no, and it's okay. Because I was like, are they brother and sister now? But they're not, because like his mom is, his dad is the new king, not the old king. Oh. So like, they could still yeah. fuck and it's not weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, oh, well, thank pseudo, God for incest, that. pseudo incest <laughs> is a big trend. In yeah. Eric Romance is in the last few years. Yeah, but they're, so. they're not related. They're not he related. can walk around. He can walk around saying she's the queen. <laughs> yeah. yeah his, her, her new nickname will be queen instead of princess. <laughs> yeah. So, no, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm that, betting like, that. Duke, I'm guessing that like the Duke was in love with her mom and was mad that she wasn't into him. And there's like oh, a whole backstory true. there. Yeah. Because he like got so pissed off and like was taking it out on her. And that's why things were like, that's my assumption. And like, was her mom the last maiden? Is that the, so I have questions. I want to mm. know more about the backstory. I do like, want to know more about the brother. That was, I, I was <laughs> intrigued by that. Um, 
And I, yeah. I do, I kind of want to find out if there's going to be a thruple with Kieran. That's, that's my, my thought um, is that there's going to be a, I, I brother or, prediction. I'll give you one brother prediction. They keep saying like, a full brother? no, guess who the daddy is of a brother? The Duke. The Duke. Yes. Cause he probably like had it cause he was in love with the mom and was pissed off that probably, yeah. I bet you're right. You know what else too? Because also the hawk has <laughs> brother. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just dancing now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna like predict that they're gonna rescue Hawk's brother, and she's gonna end up having a thing for Hawk's brother. Mm. Yeah, that's messy. That's a juicy messy you mess. <laughs> brother? Huh? That's you mean Castile's brother? Castile's yeah. brother. Castile. Yeah. Castile. Yes. Castile. Yes. Yeah. I pred- I'm gonna predict that like they're gonna rescue his brother, and then her and his brother are gonna have a thing. Mm-hmm. Well, so okay, so like I did. I also did not like that his name was Hawk, but I did not like Castile any better. And then she <laughs> immediately, hot, in her yeah. mind, she's like Cass, and I'm like, oh, okay, Sarah Jane Mass. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like Cass, Ca- Hawk slash Castile is very reminiscent of Reese. <laughs> that's yeah. well, and that's what I was wondering. I'm like, is this yeah. a yeah. Anyway, yeah. Kind well, of I, like a bit yeah. of Dorian too from the Third of Glass. Yeah, yeah. And then we've not met the Re- if Kieran's going to be the Reese. That's yeah. Kieran's going to be Rowan. I don't Maybe. even know who Rowan is. Rowan is from who, the Throne um, of Glass series. Glass. That's who she ends up with. Um, Rowan, the fake guy. This is why I decided to wear my Throne of Glass headband because it was like <laughs> reminiscent of it. <laughs> it's very, it's a very Sarah J. Mask s, but I feel it like is. Sarah J. Mask does it better, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Sarah J. Maas. Correct. Well, you liked the first ones, right? You, I mean, you were excited. But I remember you were excited when A Court of Frost and Starlight was going to come out. Yeah. Uh, I was into, well, okay, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I was like, oh, I was okay. And then, but everyone was like, because like, wait, so I saw everybody freaking out over the cover and like about Court of Mist and Fury. And I was like, oh, what's that? And then I found out that that's the second book in a series. And I was like, oh, I got to get the first one. And I was like, that was fine. Okay, but let's read this one that everyone's like losing their minds over. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty into this. And then third one, I was like, oh, everything that like I was overlooking bubbled to the surface in the third one. And I was like, Ugh. and then there was a new one coming out. And I was like, yep. And then I was like, just absolute nail in the coffin, no more. <laughs> yeah. I. So I would be really interested, Mara, if you tried A Court of Silver Flames, because I think it's the best book she's ever written. And I do think you would enjoy it better than like the earlier books. If you just like read a wiki or something on like Nesta's backstory, basically, I would be very interested to see. Yeah, it's just not a priority for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm reading it in March, so I'll be I'll be with you, Bethany. I loved it. It's going to be one of my favorite books of 2021. Yeah. Yay! Which I didn't expect because actually that series has been my least favorite of her books. Like I like all of her Same. books, but like Same. the Akatar series has been my least favorite. But I loved *A Court of Silver Flames*. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. uh, any final thoughts on the book, or do you guys want to talk about next month's book? <laughs> well, I yeah, we can talk about next month's book. Let's predict. So last month, Bethany liked Bethany has liked the book best the last two months so far. Yeah, um, so this is great Amanda for Bethany. <laughs> month and Leanna liked it. Well, and then next, maybe the next month, month I'll book. hate it and Bethany will love it, or I'll love it and Bethany maybe. will hate it. Yeah. I mean, next month is also like one of my favorite things. So we'll see. I guess. Yeah. In what way is it one of your favorite things when you haven't read it's- it yet? It's a gothic romance. I love gothic romance. <laughs> yeah. I see. So should we I just announce see. what the book is? Mara, do you want to announce? Um, yes. Yes. Believe- yeah, because you're hosting. Mara's On my hosting channel, them. we will be talking about The Widow of Rose House by Diana Biller. Billier? Biller? <laughs> Biller. Biller. Yay! Uh, I really like the pretty velvet coat she's wearing on the cover of this. Just side my velvety coat. I know. I want that coat. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes, like Amanda's coat. I'm and, a rakish uh, duke today. Have you seen my outfit? I'm like a <laughs> love Wait, it. Are you like the duke? Because you don't want to be what? like the duke in this. I'm book. not the duke. I am a rakish duke from any historical okay. romance. Hello. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't want to be a yeah. duchess. I'm the duke. <laughs> So uh, this is, a well, the little tagline is um, Gilded Age New York, a gothic mansion, a woman shadowed by a tragic past, 
the man who loves her. So it's, I, this got a lot of buzz last year as a really good version of a kind of more gothy historical romance, which I think we are due for having more gothic historical romances. Like it feels like that may be an upcoming trend because it's been a while since that's been a trend in historical romance. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. I've I think heard, we, I've also heard it's a cinnamon roll hero. Oh, yes. To these little scientists who go- hunts ghosts, guys. <laughs> I, you, I mean, I'm going to love this. It's a cinnamon roll scientist hero in a gothic romance. Yeah, like, it's going to not be more of my thing. I hope Liam has at least a girl in this one. I'll feel bad if there's two. <laughs> yeah. You know, Gates, but I'm hoping I mean, I intended to read this on my own Steam last October. So, like, it's one yeah, that I, I think- wanted to read. I think I might like yeah. it. I think you yeah. did recommend it for last um, October as well. Cause I was like, Leah, I don't know what to pick. And you're like this. And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember why I said no. Cause I'm like, Oh, I think it's going to be not real ghosts. And I'm like, I want real ghosts. <laughs> so we went with vampires instead. <laughs> yeah. We went with vampires instead. <laughs> first chapter of it last year at some point in the writing. I Liana is not going to kill you. Like the writing was nice. Oh, when so. you said Liana, the writing is not, and I was like, it's not good. Why do you? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> You're like not going to kill you. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> if, 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 if you're not going to have to deal with like all of the ellipses that were in from Blood and Ash. You won't have any of those. So, oh, there... ellipses were far yeah. from the only problem in from Blood and Ash. <laughs> well, there, there. Although flipping through it, she does like to use an M dash. Uh, I can make my peace with an M dash. It doesn't bother me. I just know some people uh, find it weird. The only (laughs) thing that does does a lot of M dashes. I can't (laughs) handle like too many exclamation points. And that's really one of the reasons why I thought Dracula was just ridiculous because it's like everything had an exclamation point at the end. And I was like, you can't exclaim the whole story. (laughs) Challenge accepted. Sir, sir, (laughs) no. So anyway. uh, it's the last Saturday of March, right? Yes. I think it's also so the 27th of March. It's also the 27th. So that'll be at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific, Pacific on my channel, yeah. 27th of March. So Yay. everybody's just- it's exciting. Yay. So excited. It's also much shorter than this book, too. So I feel it's like it's much shorter. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, can we all just like long. think back to the live show a month ago when I was like, This is gonna be a long ass book to be hating? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, had what's so funny cool. though. I, 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 well, I mean, obviously, I did enjoy this, but like, even though I liked it better than the rest of you, like, the Black Company was a struggle to get through, at least for oh, me. Yeah. Much harder <laughs> getting through the Black Company than so, I did. And it was short, time. but, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, it was it was a lot. I, uh, okay. <laughs> so, anyway. 250 <laughs> pages or whatever it was. <laughs> See, but, like, okay, for me personally, I felt like, even though I did not enjoy Black Company, and we already talked about, like, all of us basically hated it. But, like, for me, I felt like having read it, like... <laughs> I now understand more about the origins of a genre that I like. And like, mm-hmm. it's like as an academic exercise, I felt that I gained something from it in that way. Yeah. And here I, I lost time that I will never get back. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have a great ranty vlog for people to watch. <laughs> yeah. That's true. If you could find that. A maximum. I don't think, yeah. It's no. stuff. I don't think we're going to have a maximum page count. I think it's just whatever. I, I I did recommend when we started the group, I'm like, we all have a veto, right? Like, if you're like, no, I swear I will want to murder everyone if I read this. Like, everyone has, like, a veto purpose. But, like, we try to use it sparingly. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's about I it. I should have vetoed this. <laughs> uh... Uh-huh. Well, you know, trout, you can use your veto there. With with the with the, I I had good intentions of picking this book because I I I wanted you to like it. Yeah. I I didn't pick it because I thought you'd hate it. No. <laughs> she didn't yeah. pick it to torture you. Yeah. I already said I'd make you chili cheese fries. <laughs> to say sorry. Yeah, I'll never use my veto as long as I always get chili cheese fries when I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you can a good ranty vlog out of it and some chili cheese, cheese fries. I think that I that's mean, like a pretty fair compensation. Pretty fair. Yeah, Coming yeah. out a winner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody in the comments have anything last things they want to say? 
Mm-hmm. It seemed like we had people in the comments who hated it and people who liked it. So it yep. seems like this just seems like sort of a divisive book. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things that like, I think if this is something you enjoy, you will enjoy it. <laughs> if it's not oh, also, enjoy, I mean, I will wanted... hate it. Like, it's kind of, you know, have you guys yeah. read the Air Awakened series by Elise Kova? Because I mean, well, Bethany, I guess, since you're the one that liked this, you should read it because like, I hated Air Awakens. But I hated it for like almost the exact same reasons that I hated this. Like I think you would like it. <laughs> I really I'm recommending it to you, even though I hate it. Because I think it's very, very similar. Oh, that's funny. There you go. Right. Um we have somebody saying we should try to announce two months picks in advance. Is that a thing we want to do? I mean, we have can. Picked? We already picked April's. April's gonna okay. be on Bethany's channel. Hold on. I don't remember what April. Hi, Bethany. (laughs) I'll be right back. (laughs) This will be a surprise to me too because I forget. I know what it is. I just bought it. Did we say it would be? (laughs) I'm gonna let Bethany announce it, but I just grabbed my copy. (laughs) It uh. Okay. Oh, I think I know. We are reading a heart Heart of blood and ashes. Yeah, so more blood and ash, everybody. We're coming back in April. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna be really sad. We added heart this time. Yeah. I, I think Leanna will not hate this. I don't know if she'll actually <laughs> like it, but I'll be sad if she doesn't because I do love Neil Levine. I think it's going to be interesting. Well, at least you get like barbarians in this one. So yeah, yeah. Of the so we'll be reading this. Variety. There you go. March of the what? Variety? April. Yay. Of the Viking variety. Um, okay. no, they're not necessarily Viking. They're barbarians. They're, they're just sort of. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to give it away. It has the gods walking among us in a way that's really fun. Yeah. Um, there's I'm excited for it. Revenge. I've been wanting to read this since I heard yeah. you talk about it, Mara. Yeah. So I've been like, this would be a good. Well, and based yeah. on what you said you liked about the themes in From Blood and Ash, Bethany, mm-hmm. I think you will really like A Heart of Blood and Ash because it's basically an entire revenge of like somebody has wronged her and she's like coming into her own. Yeah. I well, am. I mean, she will rise from that. blood and ash. <laughs> she I she will rise and give a bloody it's, handy to the hero. <laughs> that was, it's the bloody handy book. Okay. Um, <laughs> handy book. So first, we're going to have a delightful ghost hunting with a cinnamon roll hero in, in old timey New York. And then we're going to have go. some barbarian um, cunnilingus. In, <laughs> oh, no. And then it'll be Leanna's turn to pick again so she can. I and already know which book I'm going to pick, so we're not going to announce it yet because I haven't even told you guys, but I already know what I'm picking. <laughs> I know I'm going to pick it. I'm going to wait and find out what Amanda and Lana pick, and I'll try to pick well, something I already else. Yeah. what I picked for mine. Oh, you did? I announced mine. For mm-hmm. May? For, for May? No, I don't remember me. you telling us. I don't either. Oh, yeah. Shadow oh, Shadow. okay. I need to buy that. Oh, I don't remember that. Okay. I vaguely remember, remember you it. talking about this. The Book of the New Sun cool. is like one of those seminal kind of, you know. I need to buy that. Okay. Fan, science All right. I'll go We're buy just that. Getting, like the whole spring lineup, guys. Like, you know what? Okay. We could just we could just make like a whole like yeah post on Instagram and be yeah. like, here's the lineup for the next few months. Okay. I'm okay. Just excited. I don't have to read anything new you for guys, April. Like, <laughs> you guys uh, want to know June's pick? Because I'm June. Tell us. Yeah. Let's somebody. Oh, I've read that too. Oh. Okay. 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 I'm curious about this one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm it's, down. It's, okay. I've read that one. Oh, cool. this is great. Okay. Only yay. I've Three got months in advance, everybody. And then I've got to read March, Shadow and Cole. All right. We, you June, know what? We really should advance. make. Do you guys have like? If we don't have one. We should make like a um a graphic for Blades and Bodice Rippers, and we can make like a little Instagram postable thing with like our oh, list yeah. of. Uh, I hear Bethany volunteering to do this. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, to make it, I can well, do maybe it. I bar once we're done, but I also wanted to yeah. talk about like, do we have like a a branding for this? Because I need to make the thumbnail. Anyway, maybe that's a side conversation. Yeah, no, sounds we, should, we, no. we should have. A, we need to have a conversation after this. We'll yeah. So you've got you've got um, four months worth of knowing what we're going to read. So we're reading a widow okay. of Rose House. Widow of Rose House in March. Heart of Blood and Ashes, Ashes in April. Shadow and Claw in, in May. And Deal June. with the Devil in June. There you go. Bing, bing, bing. Many, right. many months in advance, everybody. 
This is, this is how much we plan for you. <laughs> we got a nice variety in here. Yeah, I like it. It'll be fun. They can be blades yeah. or bodice rippers. There's really no rules. We can read whatever we want. It's just the name of the group. So <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until closer because oh, and July is my birth month, so that's also appropriate oh. that I. Can pick. Oh yay! Hey, okay, perfect. I was low key <laughs> excited that May I get to pick because May is my birth month. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick something that's appropriate for the cancer sign. Something very emotional that Leanna will love. <laughs> oh. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. Yay. Cool. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Well, there you go. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for watching and coming and hanging yeah. out for the discussion. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, come back next month, March 27th, over on Mara's channel, Books Like Whoa. It's going to be a good time. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cinnamon roll ghost hunter guys and a, and a widow who's like scandalous and they're going to do stuff good. in a house and I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. And Leanna is like, Subtly, like, I will see how I feel later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for coming Bye. to the show. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs>